welcome back to Space Engineers Operation Exploration. The reason for doing it in creative is so that I can get like a skeleton done and a rough idea of where we're going to put things. But save it as a blueprint and carry it into survival and then build it, the build it from the template. So it means that we know how far to drill into certain places and where blocks are going to be. Uh, because I don't want to take too much material or voxels off some parts of the building like I want it to look like it's embedded into the, into the mountain and um, which we have in front of us and yeah I, I think the best thing to do is just design it in creative mode so like save a reference point so what I done was I place a block which will be the reference point on the top and then what you do is you save the world um, as like say a creative um, but you know, keep the original one, you're just saving as and then rename it to creative and then turn it into creative mode and you go into that and start building from that block you don't remove the block you just keep it and the idea is when you go to project it the reference block it'll be where the projection is and then you just everything will be as it is the skeleton the whole layout will be there the only issue is when you do that it doesn't carry over subgrids so if we have doors etc they're not going to be carried over which is unfortunate I am very very happy with the layout of this vest. I hope you all will be as well. I have tested quite a lot, so there is quite a lot to show and there is a lot of features. So I've just hit my uh, HUD and display just to show. Um, so what we've done is we have taken this mountain and I have gone Navarone style with the guns. So there's guns on the side. Two big massive battery X3 guns. That's, uh, I can't remember what mod that is, but the mods will be in the description. Um, so they are looking at, the four four sets of these guns, so they're on each side looking north, south, east and west. Um, so they're pointed out. And they've got a good coverage, like they will, they'll look just above that line. But if they need to go any higher, we can just take more material off the top of this roof. But they're embedded into the mountain. Uh, so when we go to create this in survival and of course the blocks will be there but this room will need to be cut out with a drill but that won't be hard to do just use the drilling ship to do that and I'll just take whatever material off and so they're added on each side so I'll just go around really quickly to show them so they're currently right there there is a few blind spots on this base the original idea was to have eight sets so like and um, if you imagine like a stop sign, so we've got the four corners and then another going like in an X shape and then that covered eight points. Uh, but there is a bit of a blind spot. So like that gun there will only see to as far as here, up to about 1.2 kilometers. And then the other guns won't, so there is a wee bit of a blind spot, but nothing to worry. It's mainly and that sort of comes there like last line of defense. Um, so we do have quite a lot of ships and what I have noticed when I was building this in creative is that the ships um, toggle off your darkness for your jetpack which is really really annoying. It's very very annoying because they get so close to within the base like that one there although that's probably um, let's see turn on the HUD that's 2.1 2 kilometers out now once that goes above that probably only about 1.3 1.4 their dampener effect does affect you at that range which is super super annoying like we'll see how close this here gets but the idea is if that comes within say 1.5 i think i think it's 1.5 oh what's that i want to land into what's it doing approaching ground installation oh it's this ah uh, okay now, so we're going to set up some missions first. I know this is exploration where we're going to like moons and other planets, but we need to defend this base because this base is going to be the main hub of operations. So, yeah, I want to make sure everything is, is okay. Um, now, this room uh, was one of the first rooms I'd done when I was doing the guns. The way that I'd done this was, um, oh yeah, I still need to connect that because that's technically this upgrade. So we'll do that now before I forget. This one here. Right. There we go. So that's technically one grid. And um, so what I done was 
uh, you design the whole guns and all, the railings, and then what you do is you cut off, which was there a second ago, you cut off along here, say, and then you save that as a blueprint. And then when you're going to add the guns around the four corners, you just uh, open up the blueprint and just sort of paste them on top of blocks. Although you have to add a couple of blocks, like a few like this here, and then paste it on in order to get it. But it's a quick way of doing it instead of having to do it four times over. Um, but the issue is because the base is not square, it's technically rectangle. So you've got odd blocks here and you've got even blocks here. So it means that the the paths, like this one here, the tunnel, um that's seven I think. Five one, two, three no that's five. That's five blocks wide, but the other tunnel that are perpendicular to this one, they're six blocks wide I think. There we go. Yeah, it was just one we uh, missing block, which isn't a big deal. So it is still prepping. yeah it is still um, symmetric. Yeah it's just I didn't take enough of that on off the right but not need to worry about that. It's um you'll see it on top now in a second. So th those are the main guns that go around the side. Now this is the tunnel we were talking about. Uh, let's just see how tall that gets because we might end up having to, uh, how far that gets. We might end up adding the gun up here. I think those big battery guns go 1.5 kilometers, and if it is true, we can set up some guns up here to shoot them, and be some nice scrap, very very nice scrap. So let me just go over to one of these, um, and look at the battery. Yeah. See, there's the napner's gone off. Now, what's the range? Oh, it's only 1.2. How far away is that? Oh, that's still in range. That's good, that's good. Very good. So still in range. So those guns would be able to get that. Um, Yeah, so... Yeah, the dampeners are turned off. When are they going to come on? There we are. So, um, that's the top. Actually, we'll do the top since we're up here. There's no point coming up and down. Um, so, on the very top there's these towers. They're all at the same height. And these are just more or less protecting the top of the base. Um, so you've got two rocket launchers, and these are Italian. I'm not sure, but they're like one of my favorite guns. They kind of like they use explosive rounds, so they're like bullets. They shoot at the rate of bullets, but they're like explosive, and they do a lot more damage on um, objects. And then we have just a normal turret, but the turrets are special. The turrets uh, sense a range of 800 meters, and I have set up a script, um, which I must also publish as well. I made a script that when it senses the gun firing, the base goes into lockdown. So um, if you imagine a ship or like pirates or something like that comes over and they start shooting, base goes into lockdown to protect us, and then we can go into like control room to evaluate the situation so it makes it a wee bit more um gives it a bit more of a scenario to the to the game and it makes it a wee bit more entertaining as well like you're in the base working away next thing alarms and all go off and they start shooting and um, it also works with uh meteors as well so when the meteors go off um or when the meteors are coming down and uh, this here starts shooting at them base goes into lockdown as well to protect us and then once it's done firing, everything goes back to normal. Um, so it's, it's an easy enough wee script. The script uses uh, the is shooting um, object. So um, when the gun is firing, it triggers uh, timer blocks. Or the timer blocks with a certain name, then the timer blocks does the rest. Like sets your sounds, sets the lights, closes doors, etc. Um, very, very easy to set up. And I might do a wee tutorial in programming. I used a simple wee tool that you can get on the web. Um, I can't remember the name of it, but it's very, 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 very simple. It's a visual tool, um, but you can also use C as well. I might do a video on that in the future. But yeah, this is the tallest tower we have. Um, I know some of these blocks are exposed, but they're embedded in the mountain, and uh, you won't be able to see these. Like you won't see these at all. And um, this mountain originally came up. 
the crosshair like it was all buried it's just I used the uh, the boxing hand to remove material you'll see on top I've done the same as well it's only so I can see but in survival you won't see that at all and um, so we've got more towers and we've got these red lights going around it and they they're just for I suppose anti collision lights uh, I originally was gonna color them so like you have red and green ones to mark left and right so if you're docking the base or docking at the base and you're unsure what direction you're going you know by looking at the lights but they're red or green and uh, well if you didn't know uh, planes and ships and other vehicles rely on the red and green lights to know of like direction to port so typically the red light is on the left and the green light's on the right and when you look at it you know which orientation you are and same on an airplane same thing red and green and on the tail is white so if you see white and green you know that the plane is when you're looking at it is flying um like right side i don't know what that is starboard or whatever side and if you see red and white you know that it is facing left but also flying sort of away if you see just red it means the plane's flying perpendicular to you and same with green and i can't remember as well I think if you see red and green together, I think that means it's sort of flying towards you. I can't remember, it's something like that. The base works, I was thinking of doing that the same way where you have red here and green on the other side. So you know you're docking in this direction and you have to dock in this direction. But if you see the opposite way around, if you see green on the left and red on the other side, you know that you're docking in the wrong direction. So what you have to do is you have to go around and come back. Um, so I'll show that, but first, um, yeah, we've got a wee docking station, so the reason I put a docking station up here is because we don't want to have to keep open and closing this door to get in. Now, the issue is this door has taken too long to open and close. I can't do really much about that. I have set it you know, at a high speed to open and close. It's just whatever way collisions and blocks work, I'm not sure. I see the way there, it's closing. I set the speed on it, I don't know why it's taking this time closing. Uh, oh, there's the reference point I was talking about, which is this block here. It's actually um, color coded a different color, so we know when we take it in. There we go. So we know that's the reference point. And I put, I colored these boxes in in case I accidentally delete this because I was doing quite a lot of like control, so I wanted to make sure I didn't. Uh, remove that and if I did where to put it back again if needed and um, so the normal docking direction is actually this way here and you'll know that by these posts and um, I had to tear away at the ground to make them all on the one sort of grid and that's why it's sort of butchered looking but I tried to place it back as best as I could but in reality we won't need to dig that and um, it'll be built using the builders and that's where they'll come in handy. It, they'll build in areas that we can't get at unless we were to dig by hand to get a welding tool at it. That's the where the benefit of that will come in. We won't need to touch this ground and they'll just be built. So there is 17 or 18 of these run along and they're all synced up. So if I put it to night time really quick. There we go. So when we're docking, we know to go in this direction, and also um, it's good for leveling up. Um, I was thinking of adding more uh, lights to, off to the side, um, so we kind of know we can get lined up when we're coming in. Because when you're coming in, say in this direction, you can see the lights blinking that way. So you know to straighten up and look down like that there and follow the lights. Um, I was going to set up an ILS, it is used by aircraft and it kind of, I don't know enough uh, about it to talk about it in confidence but I know the basics that when you're coming in to land on an airplane you can set uh, the autopilot to use the ILS and basically what it does is it lines itself height wise and also um, linear, yeah linear, with the runway so it, it puts it down and keeps the um, What's it? Level. And 
those lights that you see on the left or the right of the runway at the moment, there's like four of them. You've got like four red and four uh, white. So you want two white and two red and that, that tells you that you're at the right height for coming into land. I was going to set something up like that but it's kind of overkill. We won't be needing it. It's, it's only used for runways when you have like a long landing whereas these ships, they can basically hover. It'd be different if we were like an airplane that would be kind of used. But. Um, the other use of the ILS like feature that I was thinking of was that earlier on, or when I say earlier on I mean like yesterday. Um, I was testing out this here, and next thing a whole like huge sandstorm just came over and I couldn't see the base at all. Like I literally was up against, I was like this far away before I could see it and I thought well that's really dangerous. So I thought to myself it'd be kind of cool to have like an ILS feature which would basically use GPS points to engage autopilot and it would follow the GPS points. And basically take you to the top of the base and then you disengage autopilot and then land when the doors are opened um, so something that I might add but we'll leave it for now it's not um, necessary at the oh excellent right you're gonna see the lockdown so let me try and get in I don't think I'll be able to get down in time. No. No. Uh, but we should see these guns in action there in a second. I'll force Meteor Shower later on to show the full lockdown, but. Um, yeah, let's see. There's no sign of it. Yeah. Uh, that green light is just for. There we go, there's the guns in action. I don't think I've sent the max range on them guns yet, so it might be the only reason why they're not firing. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. There's not left of that. So, there's the doors closed at the minute. They are extremely slow at closing. Um, and they have the lights, there's the red and green lights I was talking about, so we know which way the doors are when coming in. Um, it's the opposite on the other way so in this one you can dock on both sides this is just the guidance um, I suppose for night time makes it better for seeing although it doesn't get too like I'm, I might try to see if I can turn down the brightness on this game because like, this is supposed to be pitch black and it's not so I'll try to see if I can play around with the settings like I want it to be pitch dark I want it to be able to use lights at night um, and have to rely on lights to see, so I'm gonna have to turn down some settings. Cause like, we can see that mountain over there, whereas we shouldn't. Like, it should be pitch black. But nothing to worry about. We can do it in the future. And yeah, so there's another tower. So there's four towers and base. So I'm trying to think. It should be go to the bottom section. Yeah. Let's go down to the bottom section first. So, um, vehicles can drive in from land and come into this tunnel here. So I'll just quickly show this tunnel. Okay, so here it is here. Again, these boxes were pulled back so I could get at it. So they'll actually come up to about there. It's relatively flat. Um, but this is the tunnel here and we've got blast doors as well. Although I have them switched. Let me just switch them back. There we go. So I'll just wait for them to close. So it's automatic. It uses the um, sensor block for that. Now they close at an angle like that there. Um, there I see it's happened. <laughs> Um, it doesn't happen whenever they're open up at the same time, but they've overlapped like that there. Um, the reason for that is because the it's odd number of blocks, and I didn't want the doors to be like say seven here and eight here. And um, so what I've done is I've just kept them both the same size, and they close like that. So it just means that if you can imagine like a dam, you got pressure. It's like it's almost impossible to break the pressure on this side, but in reality, I just didn't. 
didn't want to be um, of uh, what's the opposite of symmetric? Is symmetric? Technically that, I don't know. Um, but when we come up to it anyway, about this distance here, it triggers. Um, so we'll wait for them to open. So they're huge blast doors and a big long tunnel. There we go. Now you see the way that one closed last night. I guarantee if I stand back and let them close by themselves, they will close in a point. And the roof um, is kind of designed to look like that as well. But the whole lot is made with, um, what do you call it? There we go, they're at a point now. The whole lot is made with, um, heavy metal plating so they should take some damage but uh, they will take a load of um, plates and a load of iron like this whole floor is made of it it's so that no big heavy vehicles can go out so I'll just wait for them to open they'll close uh, they, the sensor is um, there's it up there and the two timer blocks to open and close it but it senses all the way to like that where that green light is there in front of us. So let me see I'll stand back. But there's a three second delay on the doors. And the reason for that is so that we've got enough time to get whatever long break we have out. Let me see stand back. There we go. So it's about here is the range. And then they close over and we're showing eight amber lights to show that the doors are closed over. Um there we are. Although they should be red, I might change maybe the four on top to be red. Um, it's just so then if we look down the door we know that it's closed. Then we've got the green lights alongside there just marking the edges so we know not to be too far on each side. Um, here's a buggy here I was testing. So this fits down it. This was actually the first buggy I used on the original world to transport the whole entire base, you know, the, the original start off base to the cliffs. Although I didn't do it that time, I've used a different um, ship to do that, which would have been in the older episodes. Um, yeah, so this is this is the inside here, the bottom of the base. We got a huge turning space, so we can make big vehicle. Um, I have a few ideas on some of the vehicles I want to make for land. Um, I did say that I wasn't, I wasn't too particular in land, land. Um, vehicles because first of all they're slow but I did think of one which would be kind of cool which would be like a Ma Mad Max style type of um, kind of like a lorry or a truck where you have the cab or the tractor part at the front and then a huge trailer in the back with say three car large cargo containers for taking loot and the idea is we drive along the desert and go to them bases, them bases you've seen around the desert instead of taking flying machines over that means it's safer it's safer on land than flying in the air because getting shot at in the air isn't fun and you could lose an engine and you could fall and take a load of damage and lose a lot of loot whereas the land vehicles worst case scenario is to get shot but you might still be able to like take the stuff to the base and um, the other thing as well is they use little to no energy and um, so a quick charge and you can go out for miles uh, whereas flying machines you have to wait like I know some of the ones I built only take 20 minutes to 10 to 20 minutes to charge but still it's 10 20 minutes like you're dealing with something quick um, and sometimes it'd be fun driving along the desert while it is relatively flat um, and I want to have a road system in as well and tunnels and bridges etc so yeah there's that and um, so this is the bottom bit and um, originally it will be in one of the videos I put on YouTube. I haven't put them out on YouTube yet. I still have to cut them down, put them into parts and speed up some parts so that it's not born and overlay it with audio. But um, I did originally have a crane system in here. It was massive, um, if you have seen it. Those in the future, yeah, those in the future now that have seen it. It was a very nice setup, but didn't work. Basically what done was these center columns there 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 and there had rails going up along it and the crane had big wheels that um, stuck to the edges of these rails and lifted it up and down the whole thing was the width of this here 
and it was um it was good it did go up and down although it had issues it was just a lot of clang and then when I put the floor in it the floor was too heavy the floor has to be made of steel plate heavy steel plate so then I can take the the force for like thrusters and land them too hard on it etc it got too heavy I used thrusters thrusters were they looked stupid on it and I didn't like it um, I added more wheels for more traction, more power, did nothing. So I ended up having to scrap it, which was unfortunate. It actually looked pretty cool. Um, and it will be in one of the videos later on in the future. Um, how it worked. But yeah, I was disappointed I had to get rid of it. But this this runs the whole way up. Um, to get up there, there's like a lift, which is part of the lift mod. It'll be also in the description. All mods will be in the description. So what we'll do is we'll go up first. Um, I'm going to put some lights in here. And the lights are going to be um, on rotors. So what they're going to do is instead of... So the lights can only be like 90 degrees to whatever it is. But what is like rotors and then twist the rotors down or hinges. So they're pointing down at an angle. So we've got like floodlights coming down of these. Um, but there doesn't need to be that many lights and maybe a few interior lights running up alongside just to show how tall it is and uh, but yeah this is the lift here let's order it so it's on floor two it's be coming down now um and then we'll take you up to the next floor which i'll show a few of the things off But I will try to see if I can go into the config file and edit that because I want one continuous lift going up and down. So we'll order this one. It's coming down now. From floor two. This is the longest lift, and um, that one's only a short one. Um, but we'll put catwalks around here as well just to keep us safe. And um, I was going to put catwalks around the entire edge so we can see down into the floor. Um, but. Yeah, we'll do that all in survival. There's no point in in this. There we go. So we are now at the operations center floor, so this is where everything will take place. Um, the floor below us, this is only one block tall, although I might make this two blocks in case something comes down too hard and crash to the floor and instead of breaking up everything below, at least the second floor will catch it. So that's the doors up there, they're currently closed, um, although to open it is this button here. So let's try that. Yeah, they take far too long to open and close. I don't know why it is. Um, I might change the hinges for rotors instead, if I find that's better. It's no big deal anyway, we can take them off completely. Um, and have some other way, maybe a sliding door that comes over and back. Although that won't work too well because because of them, the voxels and other nerf. But we'll, we'll see, we'll, I'll get people to give me suggestions as well. Um, so this this is kind of like an office area. It's got three floors. We've got the main one, which um, currently has all the defense uh, points. So those guns you seen earlier on, like the Navarone style ones, those tunnels go to them. And um, the rest of the floors, I haven't thought of what to put in them yet. They may be just used as decoration for now. Um, but things like assemblers, cargo containers refineries etc they'll be going up on them but they don't need to be that big like they, w they won't be on the floor either they'll be offset they'll be drilled in so whatever rooms we need we'll just drill into them and use them and so we've got spoil for choice really but let's go up to each floor just to show it 
Um, so that's floor one. This is floor one. So technically the ground below is ground or basement. Well, technically it's not basement because it goes down to ground level. Um, we've got these staircases and these green sort of emergency lights. And um, show where the exits are. See them on the other side. So let's take the lift um, up to each floor. So oh, the lift's there. Um, yeah, so you've seen the guns. There's no point going down there. So we'll go up to. Floor two. Um, so I might put things like um, assemblers, power containers, etc. on this floor. I don't know, but if they're going on this floor, what we do is we drill into it. Into, make a room and then put the stuff in it. They won't be sitting out in the middle of the floor. There's no. I want to keep everything tidy. So let's go. There we go. Um, I did want to put the lift on this centre column, but because of the 200 block limit, I had to offset the. The elevators, um, but I need to find a way to go into the config file and change it, and um, because the the whole base is probably well, I haven't worked it out, but I think it is around the entire base is probably around three to four hundred blocks tall, and um, so I need to add it that. If I was to change it, I would change it to five hundred. Um, I guess I want to do like a sky skyscraper building or something, but yeah, I'm sure it's only it's set to that just for performance reasons. Um, but don't need to worry about performance because this machine I'm using is 32 gigabytes of RAM and a good CPU, so shouldn't be worrying about that. Although the graphics card is starting to show its age, um, it is four years old. It's a 970 GTX 970, and it, it was starting to do funny things there a couple of months ago. But I reapplied some thermal paste onto it, and it's happily working as it used to be. So it seems to be holding up for now. But I reckon in the future. I need to get a new graphics card and I might get one of those um god I can't remember what it is my mates have one are looking one as well but they're all out of stock the good one the one that's like five hundred sterling what's that about seven hundred dollars six fifty seven hundred dollars not sure uh, but it's a good card um oh yes the ceiling has rotating lights and sound and um, that's for the lockdown so we'll try and see if I can trigger that. I don't know how to trigger. Oh yeah, I can trigger it with a different tar. Did we come up the stairs? A wee bit useless if you're handicapped in a wheelchair, I know, but... There we go. And this is the top floor. That's where this, um, this weird looking thing is here. But really, I probably should have had the lift pop out here. But, um... Yeah. I don't know, maybe I will. I don't know. It might be something I do. Uh, the mistake I made was this is this is made with um light steel plates. So if that gets hit it's gonna be like tish shooting tissue paper. It's just gonna break apart. Um these uh, trenches you see there you won't see them in the survival world. I only done that so I could place them. Um but in reality the builder will build all that without having to um dig up which is handy that way so that's pretty much the base um, built you can tell that this whole um, exit was an afterthought because I had to divert this tube around um, the door is just slightly open I might just get rid of them although when I go to paste this world in there won't be because this is a grid um, so that's the base anyway that's the lift shaft uh, happy enough with it Although it has taken, um, oh, that's weird. Hold on, let's get that covered. 
By the way, if you didn't know, if you want to set the color of something, say for example, let me change that. Not a lot of people are familiar with this. If you imagine you've got two colors now, you said to yourself, oh, what color is that I'm using? And you, you could press your P to change color and you're like, well, if you imagine they're all mixed up, like that was that shade and this one was slightly darker. And next thing you're like, oh, is that it? No, oh, no, I have to go and change it. If you want a certain color of what you're doing, so bring up something to the place, then hold whatever color you want, press Shift P, and that adjusts the color. So we do it again, Shift P, and then middle click. There you go, change the colors. Now, the reason why you see these lines isn't because they're two different colors, it's because um, the ones going between are hard blocks. Um, not hard blocks, heavy steel blocks. Uh, and these are um, light steel blocks. And the reason for that is because it saves on resources. Um, but we will end up having to put like two layers. Or three. If we have the resources, of course, we'll do that. Um, but it's not really a priority at the minute. Um, it just means that when we're coming into land, we're going to have to have confidence that we're coming down at a good enough speed. But um, what I did think of was that well, when you're coming into landing, you'll be landing, um, you'll be landing like facing this direction here. So what I was thinking was, um, I have like uh, sensor activated lights. So what we have is the whole way coming down, we've got amber lights, and then. We've got like, um, actually, you don't need a sensor. Just put, you know, like shots is what they're called. It's kind of like, you know, an anchor for a ship has, um, the, the chain has like um, colors are known as shots. So whenever then it's about to come to the end, it'll show different colors. So what we'll have is we'll have amber coming down. Then we've got red, amber, red, amber, red, 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 amber, amber, amber. And then we'll have all red to say that we are near the bottom. And then we could have um, a proximity sensor. So when we're about to touch, we'll have another light that goes from red to green, and that'll just tell you you're at the level, disengage. But you'll know whatever height your vehicle is. But it'll be good to have something just to always say, like your feet are about to touch the ground. So we have it that the sensor comes up to about this height here. Um, so when you're about to touch ground, you know that you've only got like two blocks before you hit it. Just means they're not coming down too quick. But I know for a fact in the future ships are gonna fall, they're gonna hit the floor at speed and they're gonna fall through. So we need to protect it. But um, I have confidence at the minute that won't happen for now. Because we only have the one type of ship, but if we're attacked and we're coming in. The, the protocol is if we're getting attacked, don't dock the ship in here if we're getting attacked landed up on one of those platforms if it has loot we'll try dock it and then get rid of the loot through the conveyor system as quick as possible and hope that the guns will protect us but the idea is the protocol sort of is that we'll try to keep if we're getting shot at don't come in here because <laughs> if we're getting shot at and we're coming down next thing one of the like say enemies shoots directly down below and hits one of the engines and next thing we're losing we're losing thrust and we're coming down at speed. We're just going to go through this floor. And all there is is just one block. I'm not going to fall away to the bottom. And the bottom is going to have road vehicles. And other equipment. And it's just going to destroy everything. So. Yeah. This wasn't supposed to be the original plan. The original plan was that the base was going to be offset by blocks. So if you imagine that's the top. This is the floor here. And then, down here, goes down to the, the garage, or the underground. But, um, I don't know why I went off that. It only occurred to me when I finished putting all these columns up, I thought to myself, hold on, I was supposed to offset these blocks. For that reason, that if you did come down too hard, at least you've got, you're hitting solid ground and you can just build it back up. But if you hit that at speed, you're just going to go through it. I don't know, it's just bad design for now, but I went off my original idea. Ah oh well, it happens, you have to deal with it. And it's too late now, I've done too much on this base to do that. Um, 
So that's pretty much it. Let me just see if I can show the lockdown. Um, so to do that, um, we need a turret. And I'm going to get a battery. Or something that I can transfer over to the enemy. Doesn't have to be anything like much. And we'll get five. Um, let's put that there. Basically what the script does is it looks for turrets with that name in it. Although I think I might actually modify the script so that it looks for Gatling turret with the, that there in its name. Although I did do that and it didn't um, sense it properly. It was like it was like the script was looking for all the conditions to be met. So if you had like say three guns, all three guns had to be firing for it to register as a lockdown trigger. But yeah, I ended up having to remove that and have it that if any of the guns named Gatling turret lockdown starts firing that it um, triggers that. It's a wee bit weird, I don't know why it shouldn't do that. In coding terms it shouldn't. I just, maybe I'll get one of you to look at it at the code and if he's gonna debug it I'll be happy enough. Um I'd be very very happy if somebody managed to debug my own code. Perhaps I'm just doing it incorrectly, maybe my conditions are set wrong, but let's see. So um let's get this battery. Bring it closer to a sweet place down. Now we put this in front. Now what's going to happen is, once we transfer this to the enemy, that's going to start shooting it. The door will close, and because the door closes, it no longer sees the battery. And stops shooting, everyone opens back up. Sees the block, shoots again, etc. And you get into a constant, constant loop. Now I have turned off destructible blocks, because if you're doing it in creative mode, make sure you do that. Make sure you have destructible blocks turned off. And as a suggestion, Make two worlds the same, keep them both the same. So you have one with destructible blocks turned off and one with it turned on. So what you want to do is design the base with indestructible blocks turned off and then test it, um, save as, and then call it like say destructible blocks on and then try different methods of destroying it. And what you're doing is you're designing your base at it with the confidence that you're not going to be attacked, which is very annoying. Like, if you, could you imagine doing them doors and getting shot at the next thing one of them falls off? It'd be a pain. But, um, destructible blocks turned off. You don't need to worry about that. And that did actually happen. Um, I was up too high in one of the ships I was shooting, and a stray bullet it pinged off one of those there, but it didn't do any damage. But if, if it had, of, like, the door would have came off. Because originally, because they're two hinges, they're two separate subgrids, so I had to put merge blocks between them to merge them into one door, which is probably the reason why they're open and closing so slow. But well, let's see. Um But yeah, do that. Have one with destructible blocks turned off and one with turned on. Okay, so once I change this to space pirates, it'll start firing. And we will begin lockdown. Ah. There we are, that's why. Nah. That's really weird. Um, <laughs> the script was working yesterday but it sat the other way around. But for some reason, it's not working today. So, I think I know why it was working, right? So if you imagine, um, let's see, put this in simplest terms. Basically what the script was doing was, it was going around, like kind of asking the guns, are you firing? And because some of the guns had the same name, like say for example, that one was the only one firing, but the other ones would have been saying no. So it was taking the first no as, no it wasn't firing, as opposed to that one there being yes. It could be that like, if that one was the first one on the list. Yeah, it makes sense. And by changing it to any, it's going through all of them and saying, Are you firing? No. Are you firing? Yes. Well then, trigger. So let's do the game, but we'll put the battery in here. So the door's not closing all the time. And transfer to space pass. Yes.
see what it sounds like up there. Yeah, so this is the gun going. See, the doors are looking to close because they am. Um, so every 100 ticks it checks to see if it's still no true. It was originally set to, well by default it's 10, but, but it was doing it too much and it was trying to trigger everything too much so it, yeah it was just a pain. Um, whereas 100 ticks is just right. If you change it to 10, I'll show you what it sounds like at 10, this is ridiculous. Well, although I can't seem to correct this, it's up here. <laughs> Let's see what this sounds like. Let's put it back. It just goes mental. It has a pure fit. Listen to this. This is every 10 ticks. Change it to 100 again. Actually, let's put it up a bit. Let's put it to 200. Okay, I think 100 ticks seems to be the maximum. Yeah, 100 ticks seems to be the maximum tick in the game. Hmm. So that's why a thousand didn't work yesterday. It seems to be a maximum. Oh well, um, at least we're happy enough with 100, so I'm okay with that. Um, that's pretty much that's pretty much it for the tutorial. I'll not end the stream here yet, although I'll take a wee break now in a second. The doors are open for me, I see. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just close the browser so it's not taken up. Um, and I can see the chat as well in case anybody sends a message. Uh, yeah, so what it is, I'm happy enough with this layout to take it into survival and start. Um, it's gonna take, it's gonna take ages. But what I'll do is, because I'm streaming, you're just gonna see, for those that are watching the streams, it's gonna be very long, because I have to drill everything out by machine. I'm not using any mods, um, because I think the drilling mods are a wee bit um, ridiculous. They're overpowered, OP. Um, so I'm gonna drill it. I'm gonna make a drilling ship, drill it all out, and then uh, set the builders to well eleven automatically. Now the builders are a wee bit cheaty, but I need them, and the reason being is because half, well not half, but most of the base is in areas that I can't get at unless I dig, and I don't want to dig, don't want to dig at all anywhere. That's it for today's episode, if you have any suggestions or feedback write a comment under this video, thanks again for watching and see you soon.